Hello, Catherine. It was great meeting you in Zoom the other night and you're improving so much, it's unbelievable. Uh, this video I'm also making for Anne, who is learning on the Scottish border, who will be in a very similar position to yourself. So I hope this this video helps both of you. Um, when I met you the other night, we looked at E minor with the first and second finger. And we moved the two fingers down one, this was his chord. And we moved the two fingers down one string to this chord. But if you notice, the thumb is comes in to touch the sixth string on every chord that is not an E-type chord. So the second chord sounds like that, even though you're hitting six, there's no sound on that string. And the third chord was just under it there. These three chords are in your book. Back to E minor, watch the way the thumb pops off coming back to E minor so that the, your audience hears six strings when you strum. There were the three chords, E minor, thumb off, then the thumb lightly touches the six string for every other chord you're learning at the moment. When you were strumming, there was a little pause between each chord. You were going. Then you stopped and you started the next chord. But we want to get rid of that little pause now. We want to keep this going. Down to the next one. To, to get it rolling along. Because once the song starts, it has to keep going. A little invisible skill that we looked at the other night this is one of the great secrets to playing a guitar. Um, teachers and books give you the impression that you get your chord and you do your strum pattern, which say down, 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 up, down, up. And, and then you would change chord and do it again. But if you want the real key to clean chord changing, the last upstroke, during that, 50% of your chord change takes place on this side. Watch this, and in, in, if I can get a super close-up for you here. Watch, watch what happens in the last upstroke. Those fingers have come off. I'll try and get you a better camera angle. Those fingers are coming off in the last upstroke. So now for the next chord, they only have to come in from there because you've only that little bit to get it right. Whereas if you don't, you're stuck here trying to jump down. That creates a new sound between the chords. And good thumb positioning is, is critical for that. So listen to this E minor. wasn't clear I'll do it again so there's a different sound I'll do this very very slowly to let you see it how it happens again And how you will know you're doing this right, the first strum of each new chord you arrive on will be clear. Up to now when you're learning, you change chord and you get, you get this muffed sound on the first strum and it cleans up on the second. But you need to do at least 50% of your chord change during the upstroke, the last upstroke, so that you have a short distance to come in. On harder chord changes from say G, I've done 50% of the chord change during the upstroke, so now I just have to drop in there to get to the, whereas you'd be trying to chase down from here. And that's, that's too hard to do. Also to help you with your sound, try to press these fingertips a little bit harder on the chord, but strum softer. And to the left hand side of the sound hole as you look down. There's a lot more give in the string here, so the plectrum won't slip out of your hand as much as, say, back here, where there's a lot of resistance back here, but it's much easier here. And don't come over the sound hole. Somewhere there is ideal. You get that nice, soft sound. It's not in the middle. It's just there. <laughs> 